Sebastian Joseph, defensive lineman. I am a redshirt senior. 2.34 to go until halftime. Illinois with the ball down 11. George pressured and he is brought down. Sebastian Joseph, our other impact player. I really like the tenacity. It's a really close, close, tight group. We need to be the aggressor. No sitting around, no waiting. Let's go. Take strong on three. One, two, three. Take strong. Just playing with a, with a bunch of fire, a bunch of fire and passion and love for the games. Yes, sir. Big Ten away game victory. Coach Ash is a very um. He's a very disciplined guy, you know, um, and uh, he wants the best for his players, you know. Um, he wants to see his players succeed, so um, he shows a lot of tough love, but it's all it's all um, geared in the right direction. It's all um, just to help you reach your maximum potential. <laughs> this place has impacted my life so much in a positive, um, you know. It's honestly made me into, a man, into the man I am today, and I'm thankful for Rutgers for that, for that opportunity, and, and yeah, that's all I can really say about that. Yeah! Tenacity. Not a lot of time, a lot of effort. Play extremely hard. You know, be consistent. Aggressive. A bunch of fire and passion. I represent a New Jersey. I chase that dream that we all want. I want to hear that cannon as you score. Touchdown! Atmosphere is electric. Steam gets real loud. He demands, you know, perfection. When he asks for something, he wants it to be done. Try to get to the dot. You quit. To know that our program is on the rise. Goes over the top and the toss is there. Touchdown, catch. This program going to another level. Head strong on three. Head strong on three. One, two, three. Head strong. 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 Head and actually being able to play and play in front of my family and friends. You think about Rutgers tight ends last year, had 16 catches in 12 ball games. You've exceeded that and more this year. What about the way that you've made that tight end position important here at RU again? Definitely fun just being able to know that I'm involved in the offense in terms of blocking and definitely catching a lot of balls. And it's definitely just fun for the tight ends that are going to play here in the future. Nebraska only rushed three there. Coach of the pass. Into, did he catch it? They said it was caught by Jerome Washington, the tight end. Marco Battaglia, LJ Smith. There have been so many guys, Tyler Croft, over the years that have contributed from the tight end position. Do you ever think about that legacy? Oh, I definitely do. They're all great players, and I definitely watch their film and try to kind of critique myself and prepare myself and just learn from them. Every day, I don't care how many games you win, how many, you stay humble, you stay hungry, you keep getting better every day. When you think of back-to-back -back Big Ten victories this year and three wins going into the last game of the season in conference, that's a big step for this program. What does that mean to you? Well, that's definitely a big step, and it's just important to be able to build on that. I'm happy we've been able to have success, and I just want us to continue to get better and not get complacent with it. Are you going to be sad to say goodbye to the seniors on Saturday? Yeah, well, I have a lot of friends that are seniors on this team, and it's definitely been fun to play with them. And it's definitely just something I'll remember forever. Always good to get W at home. I think it was great for this program. Great for this program we got this W, you know. Shows that we're headed in the right direction. Go nice. Does that group have a lot to be proud of, the fact that they've been part of what is the building block for Rutgers for the future? Yeah, they definitely do. They definitely have, like, put their stamp on the program in terms of just being able to accomplish things that this program hasn't accomplished in the past. And just moving forward, being able to let the young guys know that this can be done. 
and it could be done here. During a lot of the games this year on television, I've heard analysts, including Matt Millen, say, that kid, Washington, is getting to the next level. He's going to be a pro. Uh, how humbling is that? It's definitely a humbling experience just being able to hear that. I know I still have work to do, but it's definitely great just to know that I, I might have that opportunity, and if I do, I'm just blessed. So the big question is, will Jerome Washington be a pro someday? Uh, God willing, I hope so. And it's hard work. Yeah, it's definitely. And it's dedication. Definitely. And you need to have a good senior year, but first you got to play well this Saturday. Definitely. You excited about the finale of the year? I am. Just senior day is really important just because of every all the work that the seniors have put in. It's definitely it's a good thing knowing that we can have one last game with them and just send them out on a good note. Next year, they'll send you out on a good note. Jerome, terrific year. Good luck to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's Jerome Washington, who leads the Scarlet Knights in receptions and has had a marvelous season. More our football with Chris Ash just ahead. Our football with Chris Ash is brought to you by RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey's largest hospital and health system. By Coca-Cola, taste the feeling. And by Nissan, a win for your team is a win for you too. There's nothing quite like it except driving a Nissan. This segment of the show is sponsored by RWJ Barnabas Health. Hi, I'm Dr. Yvette Rooks, Chief Medical Officer for Rob Wood Johnson Barnabas Health Sports Medicine. Connecting with others is very good for our mental health. Giving a call to a parent, a kid, a friend to cheer up their day will make you feel better. So during this time, please connect with others and put a smile on your face. Juwan Harris, Jr. George, it was high and intercepted. He's trying to find Dudek, but it's picked off. Down the sideline, Jawan Harris. Playing defense today, former wide receiver with the interception. Um, it's definitely impacted my life in a, a, a huge way uh, to be able to come out here up north. I'm, mind you, I'm from Florida, Miami. To come up north and um, to get the support from people, uh, to see everybody know, kind of know my name or know that I play two sports or here and there, it's, it's kind of fun, it's kind of heartwarming. It is hard. Um, I think I'm kind of getting used to it. I think the first year was hardest, but you know, it's a, a lot of time, a lot of effort um, to be able to do both. And but I've been doing it since I was little, so I enjoy it. I wanted to be up north. Uh, I wanted to get away from home a little bit, maybe see all four seasons. You know, Florida's are basically one, one or two seasons. Um, that was one of my goals. Another is uh, the primetime area. There's, there's a lot of opportunities here in the New York, New Jersey area. Uh, so that was another reason for me coming up here. Rutgers of Soap has a strong history in uh, academics, um, one of the best public schools out there. So um, I felt like I was getting the best of both worlds. We got to go on movement. Read your visual keys, see the ball. Yes, I got y'all back. We got each other's back. Let's go do it. Three, one, two, three. That's all. Right. 11 down, one to go. Hi, everybody. I'm Bruce Beck, along with the coach. Welcome to Our Football with Chris Ash. Coach, is it hard to believe that the season is almost over? It, it is. It's gone by really fast. It just seems like yesterday we were in a five-week training camp and grinding through it, and it uh, didn't seem like the first game would ever come, and it's gone by very fast. Ball security issues, penalties in critical situations, and special caps, OK? You want to change the results, those things have to get cleaned up. Do you continue the preparation the same way here in the last week as you did in the first week? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's a little bit different, but yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the elements are the same. I mean, practice right now after uh, 11 weeks of the season and five, you know, really about 15 weeks with training camp, we've reduced them, cut back a little bit just because of the wear and tear that the bodies take, but we still got to get our work in and get ready for a good football team. Coming off the loss to Indiana, you said after the game, it's on me. Why? I'm the head coach, you know, and, and my job is to get uh, the coaches 
uh, prepared, get the players prepared, and go to a game and you lose 41 nothing. There, there, there's something happened, and uh, you know the preparation wasn't right, the motivation wasn't right, something wasn't right. And, and I look at myself first. You know, when we win games around here, the assistant coaches and players did a great job. When we lose games, it, it's on me, and, and uh, I take ownership in it. Do you think it was effort or execution or a little bit of both? No, we just didn't play good. You know, that, that's it. I mean, it's uh, there's nothing else uh, about it. We didn't, we didn't coach well enough. We didn't play well enough, and uh, you know the results uh, weren't uh, positive. Tom Coughlin used to say to me that he didn't know from one week to the next how a team was going to play. You have a great week of practice and then you don't play well in the game. You have a poor week of practice and somehow you come out gangbusters. Yeah. Is it like that even more with kids that are in college? No, I mean, it, that happens. You know, uh, typically uh, the older you get, the more uh, you're around your players, you have pretty good feel on, on what's going to happen on, on Saturday. There are occasions that the, that happens. You have great weeks and you don't play well. You have bad weeks and you play well. And, you know, obviously you want have great weeks and, and you want to play well every every Saturday, but uh, unfortunately, this was not a Saturday that uh, that happened. Hey, smile, tonight. smile. Have a great day. Enjoy being on the practice field with all of your teammates. You said that this shouldn't take away from what you've accomplished this year. Do you feel strongly about that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, we've improved in a lot of areas, and. Um, you know, there, there's a couple of games that we would have liked to have had that uh, going into the season we felt good about our chances. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we still have made a really good improvement in a lot of areas. And we're really positive about the future and what we're doing, how we're developing, how we're recruiting. And I think we've, we've laid a really, really good foundation here the first uh, two years, and especially this year, that we can build on. You've actually played a number of underclassmen this year. I look at who will return next year. It's a very high number. I, I, absolutely. You know, you look around the league, some of the teams we've played, uh, some of them, you know, may have eight starters, uh, eight senior starters on defense or on offense, and are going to lose a lot. We're not that team. Now next year we will be, but right now we have uh, won some games. We've built some positive momentum. We haven't been perfect, but we've built some positive momentum with a lot of younger players, and uh, we got to continue to develop those guys and continue to bring in new players into the program to create competition and build on what we were able to do this year. In every job, we talk about consistency. And there's definitely a consistency that was going here for a little while, and now you can see that you still need to work on that. Is that one of your challenges? Well, you, you never uh, arrive. You know, if you, you sleep on, uh, if you have a little bit of success, you're consistent, uh, and things are going well. If you sleep on it, what happens? You hit a, a speed bump, you take a, a left turn instead of a right turn, and things go south on you. And uh, you, we're not ever going to sleep on it. We're going to continue to to work and grind and be as good as we can be. And, and uh, you know, we're going to look at failure the same way. It doesn't kill you. It, it, it is a setback, but we can learn from what. We're just happened on Saturday. Uh, we'll apply it. We'll get a chance to go out and start over again this Saturday with new knowledge and, and try to make it better. Are you eager to see how this team responds in the final game of the year against Michigan State? Not very much so. I'm, I'm really uh, eager to watch this team prepare through the week. I'm, I'm really eager to watch this team go out, play with energy and enthusiasm and passion, and, and try to help send these seniors out on the right now. We'll talk more about the Michigan State game later in the show, and we'll have more of our football with Chris Ash in just a moment. Football with Chris Ash is brought to you by UPS. With UPS Next Day Air, your package is guaranteed overnight delivery so your Scarlet Knight gear can arrive just in time for game day. And by High Point Solutions. We deliver practical and strategic business technology solutions. Oh, pressure coming. Sacked. He is dropped by Komoko Ture. The ferocious Kamoko Ture is in the house. 54 tackles on the year. Loves to get into the enemy backfield. Yep. Is there anything better than a sack in your mind, Kamoko? Ah, just uh, just pressure in the quarterback, <laughs> and it's just uh, just having fun and just getting tackled for loss. How do you go after the quarterback? Do you try to figure out a way to go to the outside or the inside, or do you really read things? Uh, I try to critique on uh, how the old lineman moves and stuff like that, and just watch film and how to um, back set and stuff like that, and just try to find their weakness and just try to execute it. When you look at the fact that you've had 54 tackles this year, right. you forced a fumble, you've had a fumble recovery, you've done a little bit of everything, you've gotten into the opponent's backfield. Do you feel it's been a productive season? Most definitely. Um, um, having reached the goal that I said I was going with, with the sacks, but you know, just being a first and second down player, uh, I'll say I, I completed most of my goals. Gets hog tied, 
Tomoko Ture. He's done it again. So on third down and long, Rutgers bringing four. George in trouble, and down he goes. A sack back inside the 20-yard line. Second sack for Rutgers. And I think you've got talent, right. and you're playing to your talent. Mm -hmm. How have you done it in terms of preparation, work ethic, things like that? Oh, just started with spring ball, you know, no, just, no, um, no. just taking coaching, listening to Coach Ash and them. Um, they helped me prepare uh, for this year. And um, the importance of for be having, uh, being a senior and being, a, uh, being an impact player or being uh, an example of the kids that's coming up next year and stuff like that. So I just took that, you know, just took the message and just focused in and just try to take coaching and how to be the first and second down and um, SDQ. Is this it for you this Saturday? No, sir. Hope, hoping, hoping God got a plan for me to go to the next level, you know, and then um, showcase my talent and uh, improve and um, just learn everything I learned here and just take it to the league. How special has it been to represent Rutgers here and being a Jersey guy, playing at Barringer, being from Newark, to have the opportunity to go to the State University? It's been great. Um, home, close, you know, 40 minutes from mom and dad. Uh, you know, just you know, showcasing your, showcasing yourself you know, around your family and stuff like that, and then people you know, and your own fans, your know, your home native and stuff like that is is a great feeling. I think about the highlight of your career at Rutgers had to be against Michigan, the block, Michigan's threatening to take the lead, yep. and Rutgers ends up getting their first Big Ten win. What was that moment like? <sighs> that moment, wow! Like, I was shocked. Like, um. I was shocked. Like, I never seen that atmosphere in my life. When I blocked that field goal, everybody just storming in, on the field. And it's just like, it was just a great feeling. Do you remember what you said running around that field? 55 yards center of the field. Good snap, good spot. Kick is blocked. They did it again. And guess who? <laughs> it's Kamoku Ture who got his hand up and blocked it. And the Scarlet Knights have done it again. History in the making. History in the making. History in the making. Was that was that a great moment? That was a great moment. Uh, never forgot it. Um, it's gonna be lived on forever. Uh, hope I could you know make that magic happen again one day. Do you think Coach Ash is building something special here? He is. Um, coming from him coming here la last year and try to start on. Building, building and trying to build character into the team. Uh, comparing to this year and last year, he really did a good job. Kamoko, you've been in the trenches with these seniors for a long time, and to be out there and to share the moment with them on Saturday, that's gotta be special. Yes, it is. Um, it is. Um, being with uh, Sebastian for four years, the Darnell, um, you know, and the transfers, Gus, and getting to know all of them is, it's been a wonderful year. Friends for life, you think? Friends for life. And um, I'm a sociable guy, so these guys, um, it's going to be brotherhood forever. Kamoko Ture has said that he doesn't expect this to be his final football game on Saturday. And you know what? I don't think so either, because you've got the ferocity, the toughness, the mental toughness, and physical toughness, and the love for the game that I think can propel you to the next level. So good luck. Will you please buy me a dinner if you do make it? Most to the definitely. Pros? Most definitely. Don't leave me hanging. Yeah, I won't. <laughs> Kamoko Ture of the Scarlet Knights, a defensive end who plays with pride and passion. More our football with Chris Ash just ahead. Let's go! Never that though. Might be your brother next to you. You're gonna come out with a dub. Let's get it. Hey, win on three. One, two, three. Win. It's Rutgers, Michigan State, this Saturday, 4 p.m., national television on Fox. First of all, when you hear national TV, that's why a lot of these kids came to Rutgers. Yeah, it's Big Ten football, and uh, the exposure is unbelievable and get an opportunity again to go out and put our brand out on national television, let a, let a lot of people watch us. They beat Maryland 17-7 to on Saturday in the snow, but the big number was the running of L.J. Scott, 147 yards rushing. Their rushing attack is something to be concerned with. Yeah, they got a really good stable of running backs, a good, uh, really good offensive line. They've got a good scheme. Uh, they create a lot of fit problems with all their different gap schemes with powers and counters, and uh, they do it well, and, and that's what they built their program on, and uh, they're doing it really well right now.
and they have a number of sacks this year. They put pressure on the quarterback. So what does your offensive line have to do? We got to play better. We got to protect better. We got to protect the quarterback and give him a chance. But you know, it all starts with our ability to run the ball. If we can't run the ball, we'll, we'll have a, a tough time, you know, protecting the quarterback because we'll be able to pin their ears back and, and really get upfield and get after us. But we have done a really good job of protecting the quarterback for the majority of the season. Saturday we gave up four sacks. That was uncharacteristic uh, of our offensive line and the way we've played this year. We've got to get back to playing the way we were playing. Chris, it's senior day. What about the opportunity for these kids to play before their folks for the final time and to represent Rutgers for the final time? Yeah, that's, that's our focus this week. It's about trying to honor our seniors, give them a chance to celebrate one last time here in front of their fans uh, and, and family and, and go out and, and be recognized for all the contributions they've made to this university and to this program. That, that's our main focus. We have a lot of things we want to play for, but that's first and foremost. Hey, Jason, run them down. Wrap and roll. You've been with these kids for two years. Do you see their focus? Do you see their attention? Do you see them buying in over these last two years? Oh, absolutely. I and mean, we've made the improvements that we've been able to make because of the senior class. You know, anytime that you, you have a good season or you make improvements because your older guys play their best football, they've been committed, they've made the sacrifices, they've established winning habits, and, and that's what this senior class has been able to do over the last two years, and especially this year. They've set really good examples and been great models for our younger players. Do you tell these seniors that they've been a part of something special, that they're building the foundation for Rutgers of the future? Yeah, you know, this senior class has been through a lot. They've been, uh, you know, to bowl games, you know, they've gone through transition, losing seasons, winning seasons, they've gone through a lot. Uh, at the end of the day, though, their contributions to where we're at right now and where we can go uh, to in the future has been tremendous, and they've helped us, uh, again, lay a really, really solid foundation. All right, baby, it's our time to get it. Yo, we legendary tonight. Do they realize, Chris, that these three Big Ten wins so far is really a big step in going forward? Oh, absolutely. That's why we want to get one more. That's why this game is so important to send them out on the right uh, note, but also uh, potentially get a fourth Big Ten win. It hasn't happened since Rutgers has been in the league. Tell this is an opportunity to have a defining moment for this program and for you as players. So, Chris, you what's your players? message to the fans for this final home game? Yeah, come out one, one last time and, and create a tremendous environment for our seniors to be able to enjoy uh, the fans and the fan support and help uh, create a great environment that we're going to need to go out and, and beat a, a very good Michigan State team. We just want our seniors to be able to celebrate one last time in front of this uh, uh, great crowd that uh, has supported us and them throughout their whole career. We have one more show, so I'm not going to say goodbye. I'm just going to say good luck. Yep, thank you. That's it for this edition of Art Football with Chris Ash. We will see you next week.